Greetings to you in the name of our Savior. Van Dickens here, pastor of the Monroe United Methodist Church in Monroe, Iowa. I'm so glad you could take time to join me for a few minutes in devotion to God. Shall we begin with prayer? Gracious Lord, as we live in this day, may we be ever conscious of you. You know our coming and our going. Our thoughts are never far from you. Keep us from those things that are unholy, thoughts that bring despair, anger that leads to harm, laziness that leads to indifference, harsh words that ruin relationships. Keep us true to our better selves. Give us the patience that we need. May we be your ambassadors always and come to see ourselves as living opportunities to share the good news of your salvation. Remind us of our mission. In Jesus' name, amen. One of the hymns that helps me remember what we are all about as Christians is by that famous writer Fanny Crosby, Rescue the Perishing. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying, snatch them in pity from sin and the grave. Weep for the erring one, lift up the fallen, Tell them of Jesus, the mighty to save. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying. Jesus is merciful, Jesus will save. Though they are slighting him, still he is waiting, waiting the penitent child to receive. Plead with them earnestly, Plead with them gently, He will forgive if they only believe. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying, Jesus is merciful, Jesus will save. Down in the human heart, crushed by the tempter, Feelings lie buried that grace can restore. Touched by a loving heart, wakened by kindness, cords that were broken will vibrate once more. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying, Jesus is merciful, Jesus will save. Rescue the perishing, duty demands it, strength for thy labor the Lord will provide. Back to the narrow way, patiently wend them, Tell the poor wanderer a Savior has died. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying, Jesus is merciful, Jesus will save. Rescue the perishing. You know, so many of these famous hymns, while written over a hundred years ago, well, in this case, in 1869, 151 years ago. While we don't hear these hymns as often today in the light of more contemporary songs, nevertheless, they help round out and balance the fullness of the Christian life. Today, we hear so many songs that emphasize personal holiness, praise for God, and the feelings that accompany the spiritual experience, all of which are, are wonderful and great. But still, it's good when we can sing a good old-fashioned hymn that tells us, uh, to reminds us that we need to get out there and do some good. We need to bring others to the Lord. And if we don't, well, think about it. Practically speaking, the world pays a price. The world becomes a worse place to live in because we fail to bring people to the saving knowledge of the loving God. If we don't tell others where we and they can find spiritual bread, if we leave it up to them to wander about, to discover God's love for themselves, oh, it's so much harder. I mean, it's possible. God's very re resourceful. But it's like expecting a child to, to read and write without teaching them. We must show people, bring people to this love of God that we love and worship. We need to reach out to those who are lost. You know, Fanny Crosby, who, who wrote this hymn, she's a a prime example of a Christian who did just that. Blind since six years of age, she nevertheless learned to love the Lord when she was converted to Christ in 1850 at the Chelsea Methodist Episcopal Church in New York City. She was particularly drawn to the work of the church to the marginalized 
in her community. Often, she would go down to the New York City Mission and visit with the men who were housed there. Down and out, she pleaded with many a soul that had either lost his livelihood, his self-respect, his sobriety, lost families from substance abuse and neglect, men who were lost in the fullest sense of the word. She introduced many a soul to a loving God. And it was with one such uh, young man that she gently but persuasively showed him the way. He had, this man had originally approached Fanny, having come to know her and, and trust her, uh, saying that he wanted to see his mother in heaven, but he didn't think his lifestyle was going to lead him there in the end. But before the day was over, after hours and hours of visiting with him, he came to understand God's great love and his willingness to forgive all his past. He accepted Christ's invitation and became a believer. And in that moment, he slowly started to turn his life around. He was saved. Well, that night, Fanny wrote Rescue the Perishing. And it's a call for all of us. Each one of us has someone in our lives with whom we have a duty, a Christian obligation, to share God's love. Most of us have more than one, given the opportunity. Fanny gives us the example of how to reach out. Think of it. She began by establishing rapport with this man and others, letting them get to know her and trust her. He knew, this particular man, that she cared for him, that Fanny cared for him, and that she was willing to spend time getting to know him and his story. She was no stranger to him. And when the opportunity came, she responded, willing and ready to tell him the story of salvation. She had his answer, an antidote for the life that was leading him to ruin. And it wasn't a cookie-cutter, cut-and-paste kind of a uh, canned talk that she gave him. She listened and responded. Uh, she had a real human, down-to-earth conversation. And in the course of it, she gave him hope. His life didn't have to end in tragedy. Gently, caringly, patiently, persuasively, she led him to the Lord. Fanny writes in, in this hymn, Touched by a loving heart, wakened by kindness. Which means she didn't preach dogma at him. She didn't breathe hell and hell, fire and brimstone at him at the top of her lungs. She shared the gospel story as one whom he believed cared for his welfare, without any fear of condemnation for this man. And at one point she prayed with him and for him. And before long, he accepted Christ. As a minister, I've prayed with many people in, in group settings, in worship, individually. And it's my experience that most of the time, after having a good heart-to-heart -heart talk with someone, after spending some time with someone who's been wrestling, especially someone who's been wrestling with something heavy, I'll ask them if they'd like me to have prayer with them. They'd like to have the word of prayer. Very rarely will they say no. As a matter of fact, most often they are hoping I'll ask the question. And, and if I don't, they'll bring it up themselves and, and they'll ask if I'd be willing to pray for them right then and there. When was the last time you prayed for someone with them? If you haven't done it much. I encourage you to, to try. It may seem awkward at first, but prayer becomes the avenue through which God works. And if someone who trusts us is wanting to have prayer, that's their desire to connect with God, the one we know. You and I can be that conduit as we lift our voice in prayer with them. Now, we may not know what to say. We may think that we aren't the praying kind, at least not that way. But if you've never offered to pray with someone, for someone, then, friend, you haven't experienced the greatest moment as a Christian. Allowing God to speak through you on behalf of another human being. It'll amaze you how God will give you the words to say. You don't have to worry about it. You don't even have to think about it. The words will come. I'm thinking of, of those who are hesitant because they're not gifted with words. 
In his second letter to the Corinthians, Paul writes in chapter 11, verse 6, I may be untrained in speech, but not in knowledge. Certainly in every way and in all things, we have made this evident to you. This is in regards to the, the gospel message. In his own way, Paul is appealing to these Corinthian Christians to hear him out and not be led astray by false apostles and by all the distractions of the world. In this, we realize that Paul was not gifted with words. He could write quite well, but when it came to everyday speech, he fell far short of his contemporaries based on his own admission. Nevertheless, Paul spoke and prayed for others. He met people where they were and lifted others up to God for guidance and salvation. He left his comfort zone. And it was awkward. But through his weakness, he let God's strength shine forth. And as a result, many were brought to Christ through Paul and by the grace of God. Well, blind since childhood, at the age of 49, Fanny would regularly go to the local mission and visit men who had lost their way. She placed herself where there was an opportunity, and she won many a soul through her love, her kindness, her gentleness, her patience, and by letting the Lord work through her. It is so easy to feed into the disillusionment of our day. It's so easy to conclude that you just can't trust people, that it's a rotten world, that it's always cloudy and gray, and that it's dog-eat-dog, dog, and that each person is out for themselves, that there's always a hidden agenda, and that nobody really cares. It's quite easy for you and me to believe that. We say it so often in others. But there are people who care. There are Fanny Crosbys who are willing to give of their time and share what they know to be true. There are people out there who offer hope and compassion and the good news of a loving Savior. And I believe you are one of those people. My prayer for you today is that you will be intentional about the calling God has placed on you and all Christians as a loving, caring believer and find ways to communicate the gift of Christ. This past week, Kathy and I received a slew of anniversary cards from the people of our church. It's our 39th anniversary, more more coming. It was a humbling, strong reminder of how much she and I are loved. We are deeply touched. Perhaps you know someone who is approaching a significant date, an anniversary, a birthday, maybe the anniversary of a loss, and that can be an opportunity for you to reach out in the way that works best for you and that person. But it's one thing to think about it, Another to actually do it. Suggestion. Mark on your monthly calendar someone you will intentionally, deliberately reach out to and then do it. Reach out to them. It could be a friend, a neighbor, an associate, the person you haven't spoken to in years. Doesn't matter who. Find someone. Identify at least one person a month. If you haven't reached out to one person a month in a way that you haven't done so before, then that's one person more if you do it. Feel free to reach out to more than one, but at least you can say, I answered the call to mission at least once this month, and you can walk away feeling good. You'll also be blessed. You never know the difference. Your sharing the love of God will make. Now, I, I love that phrase Fanny wrote in the third verse, touched by a loving heart, wakened by kindness. Chords that were broken will vibrate once more. After spending a lifetime playing the guitar, I, I know for a fact that when I break one of my strings, it's not going to play again. In fact, one of my high octave strings just uh, broke, and I know uh, I'm not going to put that thing back on. Once broken, always broken. But thank God, people are not guitar strings. What has been broken in a human, God can restore. People I thought I'd never see in church again show up ready and open to the good news of a loving Savior. And relationships that I thought were forever broken are mended. Maybe not always in to, back to the original uh, uh, requ uh, manufacturer specifications, but, but at least to a decent, civil, caring, godly relationship. It can happen at any time. It can begin with you. 
and it can begin today. Maybe there's a part of your human heart that is still bruised from the past. Maybe there's a hurt you have been carrying around for a long time, a hurt that is waiting and aching to be healed. The good news is that it can be. It may take time, but God's love is like it's like a healing ointment that needs to be liberally applied. In time, it can heal, and it will heal if you let it. And then we can offer that same healing balm to others. God bless you this day. May you find an opportunity to reach out to others this month and the next month and the next month and make this world a better place by sharing God's great love and the hope we have in Christ, a hope that heals, a hope that saves. Rescue the perishing, duty demands it. Strength for thy labor the Lord will provide. Back to the narrow way, patiently win them. Tell the poor wanderer a Savior has died. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying. Jesus is merciful, Jesus will save. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying. Jesus is merciful, Jesus will save. God bless you. Take care. Bye now.